and welcome to Florian Models Kit Review Time. Today we've got Meng's upgraded DR9. This is a 148 scale, uh, this is the armoured bulldozer. We've looked at this kit before but not with all the, uh, the anti-missile armour on the side or the sort of RPG cage right the way around it. And it's fully upgraded and armoured and everything else with all these big lumps and bumps all over it. So if you wanted to do that sort of, you know, more the military look and everything else, then definitely this is the one to look at. Uh, it's the Stegosaurus range, SS010 is your kit number for this particular one. Very nice box art on the front, okay, as we can see on this. And we can look around some of the markings, which obviously is not a lot on this one, but you can see how armoured this thing actually is. It's a brute, okay. So there we go, it's all the way around, as you can see and a nice one on the side there as well. A little bit about it, obviously this is the Israeli Defence Force uh, upgraded version and it's also got a 7.62 machine gun on the roof uh, for a little bit of self-protection as well if needed, okay? And round on the other side. So down in the box we have Rams, absolutely stuffed box, which is very, very nice. It's still in that light cream color, as we can imagine, as we saw the first time, if I just grab the instructions. So, as I say, we've looked at this kit before, but it's well worth having another look. Okay, so down in the box, we've got the usual blurb all about the IDF forces and what they've done to it and upgraded it and everything else like that. And then you're working your way right the way through. So it's the main part of the actual, the body. Uh, we've got the ripper tool on the, the back end. Okay, and then obviously you've got a lot of various, obviously as you imagine, mechanical stuff with this. So a lot of hydraulic systems and everything else like that, as you can imagine, going right the way through. This is all the hydraulics for the ripper at the back. Okay, and then right the way up, we've got the cab assembly, working our way through that. Again, it's quite a nice detail cab in these. We've seen these before. They do look very nice uh, when they're done. The actual seats, so you've got your sort of little spring-loaded seats down in there and everything else like that. More of the cab and the armor fit going into this one all the way through. Again, more cab armor. So down here, as you probably see, this is a lot of the laminated glass work for the shielding for the crew right the way through. Then the outer parts will be inputted on. Remember to put in your holes, okay? So I assume this is where your cage is gonna fit to. Okay, and then more of the parts going down there. So it's all the cab assembly uh, and the various bits all going in. All right, then carrying on, as I said, this is all about armor on this particular vehicle. So as you can imagine all going in, the top plate going in, the top turret, the machine gun mount and everything else, as you can imagine, just going down on there. A lot of the aerials uh, and the smaller parts all being put in, grab handles. Hose system, okay, so you've got all the piping coming out of this guy, as you can imagine, there's gonna be quite a lot. And then some of the more of the stowage items, so you've got the old uh, the machine gun fit to the top, uh, water cans, probably fuel cans, and uh, things like that. All right, and then it's gonna get busy, all right? So we've got a lot of the actual armored fit. This is obviously the upgrade to this particular one, being the armored version, is all of this lot going on. So this is where you've opened up all these holes. Now these are the holders that are gonna hold the cage on. It's gonna be covered, as you can imagine, everywhere in it. Putting in the hosing system on this one, we assume you're gonna get the rubber hosing in there, okay? And then it's down to the actual drive, the actual running gear itself putting all of the wheels in and the bits and pieces you can imagine down in there the drive system the track which looks like it links as well so it's got a nice link system on the track which is very nice and then again a lot more of the stuff so we've got steps down here lighting systems things like that filters uh going in on the top and everything else so you've got obviously your two types, I don't know if there's one. Got the air inlet and the exhaust pipe system being put in there. And then again, for the hydraulic system, off of this giant at the front, okay? And again, all of those areas going in, the armor going around it, and obviously with the lights going in on the top, the blade itself being put in, the hydraulic systems, as you can imagine, there's plenty of it. And then it's putting all this grill work on, okay? So we've got lots and lots of grill work all the way down on here, right the way through, and then all the way around the entire vehicle. And that will give you your dozer ready to go, okay? Usual thing down here, as you can imagine, so we actually got the parts call out for the trees, we've got the decals, we've got the photo etch, uh, talking about the pipe, so we are gonna get a load of pipe. And we've got some metal rods down here as well, which is another nice touch. Okay, and then over. Quite nice that we got proper artwork here, giving you a little bit of weathering into the artwork as well, which is always very nice to see. It gives you a bit of an idea what to do. Um, so as you imagine, you've got the Combat Engineers Battalion, uh, 188th okay, Brigade. That's down there, October 2015. Or we've got the 401st. Again, all Israeli Defence Force ones, as you can imagine. Um, we got down here in the Golan Heights, 2014. All right, so that's your options. 
running around, color call out usual, we are in Vallejos, all right? Very nice. What I love about this kit, and when we looked at it the first time, is it's that crossover. It's not armor, okay, so it's more civilian dozer, and then this one has got that nice armored upgrade to it, which is, you know, obviously it's one of those things, we're talking dioramas, but standalone as well, just to have something a little bit different. So as I call it, best of both worlds. It'd be nice to see JCB releasing kits like this and all various bits things and case and all the companies and Volvo that you know would be nice but I don't think you're ever going to see them they seem to have their little niche areas right we've got loads and loads down here to get through so what we're going to do is I'm going to just make my way through one bag at a time and hopefully we'll get through this quite quickly okay so straight off the bat let me just drop the top cam as well as the side cam just to give us a bit more <coughs> Okay, so as you can see down on here, we've got some beautiful details all the way around on this. You probably see it on the close-up as well as the overall. Very nice. Again, usual thing with Meng, it is that thing of beautifully done. Very sharp, very nice detailing on all of these, so you've got no problems at all. The fit issues, there usually isn't any. All the ejector pins are very nice and shallow tucked neatly out of the way and everything else like that but again big chunky strong plastic which is really nice but beautiful sharp little details all over it so that's sprue s <clears throat> okay then we've got <clears throat> down on here we've got sprue m and again, looking at it, you can see we've got the boarding on the top. This is obviously internal for the cab, I assume, and various things. The armor glass windows, yeah, the sections for that. You can see the thickness on these, how it's going to be. It's nice, it's big, it's robust, it's chunky all the way through. Their bags are slightly different. These are more normal plastic bags than your crispy, roughly types. Okay, uh, usual thing, so we've got sprue F, as you can see, beautifully done, very nice casting, no problems on any of this at all. Some very nice sharp little details all over this one. As I say, it's a very mechanical thing. This is where we obviously, you can see the end points, so we wanna be opening up all these holes so you've got the cage unit going on there as well. So that's sprue M, sorry, F. <clears throat> Okay, so then down here, sprue R. Again, beautifully done. The bolts, really nice and sharp. All of the details running around on here, as you can see them, beautifully done. Very nice indeed. And even on the blind side, as I said, all the ejector pins, barring just the odd little one down here and there, perhaps, all recessed. Okay, but they're all tucked out of the way. It shouldn't be anywhere where you're going to see them, so you don't need to take care of them. They're not going to interfere with uh, fits and various things like that, so it should be all very nice. Okay, this is showing the armor for the rack system, which is something we wanted to look at. So as you can see down here on sprue V, this is obviously one of the afterthought parts on here. This is that armor set that's designed to catch RPGs as they're going in, okay? Very nice indeed. Beautifully cast. We've got no flash on these items at all. Tiny little bit there perhaps, but again, you can scrape it off with your nail. Beautifully done, very nice, very cast, very crisp. All the smaller parts, beautifully done. Nice little small little gates on them as well. And all the gates as well are slightly offset. So it's not like it's the entire part. There's a step so you can get in there with a knife, your scissors, your sprue cutters, whatever you want. And you can get them off the sprue cleanly with making no damage. Okay, so again, very nice indeed. <clears throat> uh, this is sprue U. These are the Older sprues, if you like. Okay, so down here we've got sprue U. Again, more of the guard. A little tiny bit of flash on this guy, if we're honest. You can see it just down in here. Hopefully one of the cameras will catch it, the flash. But this guy has got a little bit of flash, so you could just literally... Actually, this does the trick. Just pop a blade in here, just to knock off the burring and this is what it is it's the burring between the the two layers okay but you can you might be able to see just a little tiny bit of flash down in there but now we are really getting picky with this one because it is like a you know a tiniest very thin you can see a little tiny bit of flash down here through the transition on the gate very nicely done but what i'm quite impressed with is quite large items we haven't got any ejector work 
on the actual gates themselves. Yes, we got them down in there, but those are gonna come off anyway. But what we're talking about is these large parts down on here and in here, we are absolutely fine. Okay, so there's no problem with that at all. And this is obviously the fencing where it would drop down. It actually latches on by dropping onto it. Okay, so again, very nice details on all of that. <clears throat> okay, sprue L. Down here in sprue L. We've got top of the cab, as you can see, beautifully done. Very nice details on that as well. And then obviously we've got the actual roof glass or side glass. More grills and vents, these louver door types, beautifully done. All of this work, the, the actual clasp for closing up the actual uh, roof sections themselves, the boxes, beautifully cast, no problem at all. All the towers have been cleaned up, these ones that were protruding originally, there's one left over there, so that's the bits that we're talking about. Usually they clean them all up, that's very nice. A little bit of wiring detail down on the inside. Okay, so as you can imagine, it's quite a, an in-depth kit, this one. Uh, it's got lots going on around here. Let me get into it. There we go. <coughs> All right, so sprue N, again, we've got some more of this plating system, which is reversed on this one. So as you can see right the way through, all the holes are cleanly molded, no problem with it at all. Again, tiniest little bit of flash around on this one. Actually got a little bit of flash, but you might notice just down in here, you can actually see we've got the light system. It's tiniest burring, which is new to me because normally their kits don't have it, but these are very complex little shapes to do. They are on the offset, as you can see it. They're not very you know, easy to do a mold, so I will forgive them having a tiniest little bit of flash down in here. Quite unusual to see it on the main stuff, but uh, it is here. There's the uh, MG, the machine gun on the top. Okay, so usual thing, pretty standard, nicely cast and molded and everything else like that. So obviously you're gonna have to put the stock on and the, the various parts for that one, but it's already pre-molded onto the swing arm. It's in one piece which is a little bit different, but uh, that's fine. Hatches, again, we have got some ejector pin marks, just light ones on the inside, so if you were to have it displayed open, you're gonna have to take care of that, okay? A couple of swipes of the sander, and you'll be good to go. Okay, it looks like we've got the ripper tool. <clears throat> this is the ripper off of the back that would hang down the tooth. Okay, so what we've got here is sprue P. Again, beautifully done, very nice, big, chunky, all the rest of it. No flash on this sprue at all, which is really nice. And again, this is the blind side where it's all gonna to go together. No real problem. No real deep burring either between the actual uh, sandwich on this layer whatsoever. So a couple of swipes with a sander takes care of those beautifully. No problem at all. Lots of plastic for your money, which is nice to see. Okay, this isn't just a shake and bake, chuck it together kit. It's gonna to take a little bit of work to get this one in there, but the parts are all very nice, the big, the chunky, the crisp, uh, and it'll give you a great looking uh, something. You know, you could do multiples with this. We're not just talking about you down. You could put it on the back of a lorry. You could do various things with it. It's pretty much limitless. So, Sprue J, as you can see, some very nice hosing, various bits. We've got the seats down here. We've got no real padding or cushion sort of texture into these, but something you obviously could add afterwards. Um, we've got the control grips, things like that, nicely molded. A little bit universal, perhaps, these uh, the little rubber boots for them. Be nice to see, perhaps, if it had a little bit of texture down in those. Communications equipment, various, obviously, things for inside the cab, as you can see, all the way around here. Generally, very nice indeed. No problem with that. Down here we got the actual seat suspensions. Uh, again, a little bit generic. Would be nice to see perhaps a little bit of lopsidedness into it and wear and tear molded into it. But uh, generally, very nice indeed. <clears throat> okay, this is your drive and the wheels. Okay, so down here we've got a match pair. So we've got sprue A, the giant drive cog, obviously the road wheels, a little bit of armor glass work going down on here. Uh, we've got some various handles and grab things, as you can imagine, all the way around, and the little return wheels all over these. We have got molded in bolts as well on here. I don't know how well the camera's going to pick that up. You might see that. We've actually got molded bolts all in here, so I'm assuming you come in with your knife and you can trim them off, and you're going to have spare bolts. I haven't seen it and it's not marked anywhere down on here, but that's definitely what that is um, because they're hexagonal on the top. So we do have bolts molded in. Obviously you've got some more over on now. There's your hose, that's what we were looking for earlier. 
<clears throat> okay, so down on here we have rubber hose. Okay, it's pretty nice. It is hollow, but it's extremely thick. I don't know if one of the cameras will grab that. So it's a nice thick hose, which is the great thing with this is when you bend it over on itself, it doesn't pinch particularly easily. Okay, it probably would do if you really bent it like there. But if you were talking any type of light coiling, it's not going to pinch on itself or collapse because it's a thicker hose. Tamiya, take note because you tend to use thin hose. Okay. Uh, we've got match pair on B uh, for obviously both sides <clears throat> and we've got some poly caps down in here we should just mention okay so as you can see hydraulic rams things like that down in here um, I'm not sure if this is going to be workable uh, a movable one sits together I assume it would be because it looks very chunky and robust for something that's just going to be glued together we've got the lights for the top the cage for them and obviously the unit as well down on there obviously I assume this is a hydraulic ram which are probably going to fit inside these guys because they're hollowed. Again, we've got a little bit of, if they are in there, you're going to have to take these out, but these are literally just to knock them off with your finger job. There we go, we've done that one already. So that's going to be very straightforward on those, but generally very nice indeed. Armour glass we'll look at the last. Okay, a little bit of work up around the cap. Okay, so up around the cab, sprue K. Again, the doors, big, chunky. Unfortunately, there is no details to the inside. You have got a little bit of hosing work, but we have got ejector pins down here. A little bit sad to see that, that you're gonna have to go around and actually sand them out, okay? Some more equipment for the inside of the cab. Various bits and pieces on those, you can imagine. Looks like we've got some springs down in there. Uh, generally very nice, clean, crisp, precise. The glass is gonna fit in there very nicely indeed. As I said, it does keep giving this kit. <laughs> Okay, sprue E, all right, so again, very nice. Got little signs of flash on this one again. It's actually the first kit I think I've seen of Meng with little bits of flash on it. I have got tiny bits, and I'm being very picky on them now because they are very good, all right? But generally, no problem in there at all. Very nicely clean molding all the way around on that one. Very nice. Okay, looks like we've got the underside. <clears throat> Everything piling over now, falling over. Okay, sprue G. So we've got, uh, I think this is the front grille, is it, behind the actual pusher unit, the blade, uh, and then the back, the floor. Again, quite nice. Got some nice texture on this guy because it looks like it's cast. Okay, the actual uh, air vent or air intake on the top there. No problem at all. Very nice. A little bit of burring on this guy which is what we were talking about. So a quick wipe over gets rid of it, but there is a little bit of flash on this kit. And what it is, it's the, the burring between the layers it seems to be a little bit different. So just the parts might just need a little swipe. You know, we're talking down here as well. You might see it just a little bit. I don't know. It just seems to be getting a bit of stuff coming off on this one. It's not as cleanly molded as perhaps we've seen some of their other kits, but it could be just a time factor. <clears throat> okay. Drive unit. So we've actually got down here, this is obviously where the road wheels are gonna run and everything else like that. So this is sprue H. Okay, again, beautifully cast and molded. No problem with these at all. Very nice, you can see, and these are gonna be great because it's gonna accept weathering so well. It's got good texture to it, nice shadowing details down in here, washes, things like that, dry brushing. It's gonna make this come alive so quickly and so easily. Very, very nice indeed, okay? So no problem with that at all. We've got no problem with ejector pins on that side. Very nice. Okay, this is, I must admit, I was going through here thinking, where's the blade? Answers the question there. That gives you an idea of the scale of this thing. It's my hand, that's the blade for it. Okay, it's wider than my hand. All right, so there we go. There's your blade. There's the actual top part of the grill on the top. It's gonna to go on top of the blade. The actual bottom half of the blade itself down on here. And then obviously the back part of the blade unit itself. Very nice to see that. Beautifully cast, no problem with it. It's gonna be absolutely fantastic with that in there. Beautiful, very nice. Okay, the glass. The armor glass has got an armor tint to it, which is a nice touch, and it is separate bagged. So we've got two colors of glass in here. We've got both called sprue T. 
as you can see. But the thing is, if we can find the end, where's the end? Where's the end? Where's the end? Okay, can't find the end. <clears throat> As you can see, we've got one in this gorgeous armoured green coloured glass, okay, just like so. And we have another one. Find the end, find the end, find the end. Don't tell me it's together. Oh no. If I can get into it. Come on. Chunky fingers. And then this one, as you can see, is just crystal clear. And you have to say the glass work is perfect. Absolutely crystal clear, no problem with that at all. So you've got the option then to have the armor blue or the clear glass. I presume if you had trouble getting hold of the actual normal DR9, um, you could just do it like it. Just don't put the armor on. Okay, the track itself. You'd be surprised, it doesn't have a massive track on this because it runs like a triangle. But again, extremely nicely done. So this is C, of which you get three down in here. But we've got the blade parts themselves and the hooks on there, as you can see. So what's going to happen is these are going to glue onto these, and then they are going to bite together. Now, there's no point doing it because it's three-part, but these will self-link together. They clip together, fully workable track, and it will spin round as well. So that is really nice to see. Admittedly, you don't need any travel in these because you don't have it, okay? But the thing is, you still need the sag as it works its way round and everything else like that because it's got that natural stuff going to it. It'll be an absolute joy, okay? We got some uh, little aluminium, I think they're aluminium, probably aluminium, uh, tubes, okay? So we know that's gonna run for the insides of the hydraulics and things like that in there. So we get a bag of those. We get a lovely little bit of photo etch. As you can see, just the one little bit, nothing tons, but it's, uh, it's quite nice because we've actually got the, the name plates on there, which is quite a nice touch with that. So you can actually see uh, 949640 or 949643. So it's quite nice to have the actual plates on there like that. Okay, and some of the other parts. It's quite a thick photo etch, to be honest. Okay, <clears throat> and then down here, as we can see, we've actually got the uh, decals for it. Not too many again, but as I say, we've got the as you, the um, markings one, so it's 944, sorry, 949 at 630, or 949 at 642, or 949 699, 669, sorry. Okay, so you have got options down in there to do it. Okay, and there we go, that is it. It's a great kit, I've seen this one done, I know many people have done the old version, haven't seen an armoured version yet, but I've seen the old one and it is something great. What I love about this one is because it comes from a civil background instead of military, okay? But it's still that nice thing, it's a dozer and all of that. I'm a great believer, and I've been saying it now for well over 10 years, it would be nice to see JCB bring out a range of kits, okay? Or Case or Volvo and things like that. I think that could be a great niche area in the market. So if anybody wants to get in touch with me who's got a spare, hmm, I don't know, 300,000 pound, let's get on it and we're gonna start bringing out and we'll get some licensing sorted and everything else. Because I do believe there is a niche in the market, in the hobby, to bring out mainstream kits. I know you can get aftermarket ones and garage versions and all the rest of it, but we're talking mainstream where you can actually do civilian vehicles as well. So we're talking cranes, um, you know, dozers, you know, rock trucks, things like that. I think they have a lovely little niche little area for the civilian side to do them in 135th scale and even bigger perhaps uh, and things like that. Because I think it's actually like a niche thing, it's in between scales. The RC guys have got them, but not normal mainstream and all the rest of it. So, but there we go. That is Meng's new tool, because uh, it's been upgraded to actually have the armor and everything on there. DR9 in 135th. <laughs>